I want to say thank you to each of you, to Madam President, for the commitment to ending AIDS in children, and to thank you for prioritizing this meeting. The importance of your participation really cannot be overstated. That said, I had a rather longer statement to make. I was asked by the organizers to speak to a number of issues, and um, as we are wont to say here, time is not on our side. So I am simply going to give my full remarks to the organizers, uh, a kind of submitted for the record, and we certainly at EGPATH um, will be happy to share those remarks. I'm just gonna highlight three points. I think uh, the majority of colleagues here are aware of uh, EGPATH, the Elizabeth Glazer Pediatric AIDS Foundation. We will be celebrating 35 years since the remarkable leadership of Elizabeth Glazer, 25 of those years um, on the continent here. We've worked with many of you across um, all of the countries that are, are participating. We are here in support of this alliance. We believe the alliance is critically important. The alliance is necessary, it's not sufficient. And so there are a number of other actions that we need to take and we need as our uh, program colleagues were challenged yesterday to think differently. Well, it's not enough for the program colleagues to think differently. I think our advocacy colleagues and ourselves have to think differently. I think we have to speak differently. I think we have to do a number of things more creatively drawing on the successful actions of the last number of years. Second point is data. Uh, so many colleagues have spoken to it. Um, it's essential, particularly since virtually everyone in this room chooses to make data informed decisions on the one hand, but we have a kind of logic problem. We keep doing surveys that don't include zero to 14 in the surveys. We want the data, we don't ask for it. We struggle when we have to make adjustments because we didn't get the data, even though we're still uh, collecting. So there are ways to do sustainable and afford, uh, affordable surveys and other actions where we can get the data, including on zero to 14, so we can make uh, better and smarter decisions. Investments, the next big piece of this work is around investments. And yet we don't have nearly as good a picture of where and how investments are being made for children. We don't know nearly enough. Thankfully, SACABA, the Coalition of Children Against, uh, uh, for Children uh, Affected by AIDS has issued in a report. It's like a flashlight in the dark so we can figure out the next steps. Critical to these revised strategies is further investment. We have to be real smart about finite resources that are gonna have the greatest impact for children. We need to scale the tools we have, the optimized treatments that we have, the pediatric DTG, so much work was done to develop that point of care, early infant diagnosis, enormous amount of work done to prove how effective that is. It's not being scaled, it's stalled, it needs to scale. The executive director, Winnie, uh, made a hugely important comment earlier today. COP process and the CCMs with the Global Fund are just ahead of us. Those are the opportunities to combine the strategies that have been de developed, the need for further investments, the need for advocacy, so that the Global Fund clearly hears at the country level a voice for children, and that is all of you, that is all of us collectively. And Thank you very much for taking that, making that commitment today. Thank you very much.